Alright, so in previous videos, I had mentioned how I wanted to depot these three beige cosmetics palettes and then put them inside this double-sided magnetic palette from Another Soul on Etsy. And I figure I might as well film some of that process for y'all to see. At first, when I did this first one, I wanted to see if spraying ice purple alcohol would help prevent cracking because then the pans would be slightly damp and less likely to shatter. Um, I'm not sure if that really helped the way I did it here. It kind of made it slippery at times, but here you can see me using just a normal, like, butter knife or whatever <laughs> to separate where the shadows are from the outside packaging. And, um, the first one was the most difficult because I was, you know, still figuring out the best strategy. As you can see, I kind of struggled, but I eventually figured it out and, um, then it was pretty straightforward from there, you know, I have to rip off the paper and the layers of cardboard. And I used a mixture of just using my fingers and the same butter knife to get under the edges and lift up the cardboard and rip off layers and layers until I actually get to the layer that is underneath the pans and not surrounding it. And I would have to say that out of all the steps in this process, this is probably the most time consuming and, um, I guess dangerous in terms of whether or not I accidentally stabbed Shadow, which I definitely did at one point with a knife. Um, but I eventually got to the bottom and from there it was pretty straightforward. Just got to be careful when I put my knife under there and lift it from the palette. Um, the shimmers are always fine with that. Um, sometimes the mattes had like slight cracks forming and so I would just spray some isopropyl alcohol and kind of use a paper towel to press it back in to make sure it's not too out of hand. It never was like a really intense crack, so that was good. Um, but yeah, then I had to rip off any remaining paper or glue that was stuck to the bottom. But in the first wave of this process, I didn't really focus on getting all of it off. Especially in this first palette, I wasn't as proficient in <laughs> ripping off the glue. Um, but later, since I didn't spray isopropyl alcohol, it wasn't as wet, which made it a lot easier to peel off dry or sticky glue. Um, but it wasn't until later that I actually took off the last part of color and glue that was stuck to the bottom, though I wasn't perfectly thorough because I was kind of tired and this was a long process. But here I tried rearranging it slightly because it always bothered me. The original arrangement of this palette never really made sense to me. It was kind of confusing. I think if you just moved one or two of the pans, it would make so much more sense because then it would be cool toned at the bottom and then warm toned at the top and be a lot easier to make color stories and color pairings. And this was the next day because I realized these pans weren't magnetic, which was totally a fault of mine. <laughs> I was being dumb. Um, so I bought these little metal stickers and um, then I just peeled off the little paper part, stuck it onto the bottom of the pan and boom, they're magnetic. Um, it was very easy. I had to obviously make sure the bottom was clean and flat before I did that. At first I wanted to organize it with mattes on one side and shimmers on the other, but I later decided to change that. Here you can see I'm starting the process again on the next palette. I ended up already starting the process the night before of taking it apart just because it's very time consuming and I wanted to kind of have a head start once I actually had the magnets to work with. Um, but yeah, it was pretty much the same process and I got slightly better and faster at it as time went on, but it was still just a fiddly process that wasn't like a perfect science. I decided to use a dropper with isopropyl alcohol later and um, drop it into the pans because I didn't have the alcohol in the sprayer anymore but also that way the cardboard wouldn't get wet which meant the glue and the cardboard would be all sticky on the bottom of the pan making it harder to get off. But here you can see something really weird happened with that blue one. I put it, I just put a drop of isopropyl alcohol like any other one and it bubbled up. It was the strangest thing. I assume it must have had some kind of air bubble or something, but you know, I pressed it down and it was fine, but I'd never seen that before. It was like a little volcano. It was so strange. Um, but yeah, here I am cleaning the bottoms of them so that it's easy to stick the sticker on. Again, just kind of like a fiddly process. Some of the glue didn't want to get off as easily as others. So <laughs> 
I might have scratched at the bottom of some of them, but again, it's not something that was super important to me. But finally, I made it to the last palette. Again, doing the same process before, peeling back the cardboard and then lifting the pans from the palette. And um, it definitely got faster each time. I kind of just got into a rhythm. And you can see some of the pans look discolored because I dropped probably a little bit too much alcohol in them, but they're fine. <laughs> I'd rather that than them crack, because repressing them entirely sounds like way too much work. But after I cleaned these pans, then I was able to stick these magnetic stickers again on them and get to the fun part, which is organizing. And as you can see here, I wanted to put mats on one side and shimmers on the other. But <laughs> after looking at it for some time, I realized I didn't really love the <laughs> just how it looked. It made the colors kind of it it wasn't inspiring obviously this is more of a storage space so I can take them out and make my own color stories but I also like it to be inspiring in the first place so later I split it up more by color than by finish um but also in this process I realized how many similar shades I had like they're all mostly nuanced and different but there was a lot of pale pinky peachy shimmery shades and then there were several similar browns, a few similar peachy shades as well, which surprised me because I only had three palettes from the same brand. You wouldn't think that there'd be that many overlapping shades, but there was actually several themes going on. And the way that I set it up with shimmers on one side and masks on the other really amplified <laughs> how similar some of these shades were. Um, but as you can see here, I was trying to organize it by color and by finish. And I like how it looked, but it just, it wasn't for me in the end. One theme that I find fascinating within most makeup brand companies with their eyeshadow palettes, they make their mattes much more bright and vibrant than their shimmers. Now, this isn't always the case, but I notice it in these Beach Cosmetics palettes and a lot of rainbow or colorful palette releases. If it's going to be a rainbow, it's usually matte. I rarely see a purely shimmer rainbow palette, and if so, usually the shimmers are less vibrant. I wonder if that's because it's harder to formulate, or what's the reason, but I feel like I typically want my lid shade to be the most vibrant and poppy thing, and some people like matte on the lid, but a lot of times people like shimmer on the lid, so... I always just found that interesting. I don't really know the explanation, but as you can see, the matte side does look brighter here. But after hours and hours of work, I finally finished it. And I definitely think that despite this long process, it was worth it. Here are the before and after pictures. And here is what I did by the end of the video, but then later I changed it to this format, which I think I will find much more suitable to my tastes. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye!